What's going on everybody and welcome back to another video. So today we're back working on the Tahoe. I got a few things we're going to be installing. Um, you can see I'm out here in the driveway just because the Tahoe is a little too big to work comfortably on in the garage. I think uh, it's a nice day out. We should be able to get everything done out here without a problem. But I have a few parts here we're going to install. I'm just going to run through them really quick and then we're going to get to work. Alright so I mentioned in the last video on this thing about uh, kind of my plans and what I was going to do with it. The next mod is going to be leveling the suspension. Now, I'm not raising the front up. I'm actually going to raise, well, lower the back down. Now, I was initially looking at leveling kits. And I decided to go with lowering the back just because of where I'm kind of going with this. I'm not trying to uh, jack it up or anything. These are the biggest tires that this thing is probably going to see. I'm actually going to a narrower 285 once I actually get new ones. But I wanted to just lower the wheel gap in the back and make it even with the front without actually going any higher. Now a couple of reasons for this. One thing, if I'm going to be adding more power I'd rather have it a little bit lower to hopefully help the handling a little bit if that makes any sense. I mean it's a giant SUV regardless it's not going to really handle. But I figured uh, dropping the back down might help more than actually making the thing higher in the front. The other thing is I just like the way it looks with these wheels and everything. Uh, with the 18s, I think having uh, the back lower and kind of level all the way across is going to look really good. All right, so here's everything that we're going to be installing today. First off, I have the springs. These are iBox. They ran me around 200 bucks. Um, I got them off of eBay, and they're 2-inch drop springs. So in theory, these should drop the back down so it's perfectly level straight across same wheel gap as the front i'm going to put up a little pic uh just so you guys can see what i'm talking about with the um kind of how it sits now you can see the back is higher than the front it kind of has a rake which i really don't mind i think it kind of looks uh it looks pretty mean like that but having the uh the back lowered i think it's going to look even better just having it level all the way across the other thing we're going to be installing are these relocation brackets and all these do are uh, you remove the bottom bolt for the shock, you bolt this in place, and uh, the shock pretty much bolts to the bottom there, and this just drops it down two inches. So it pretty much just keeps the geometry of the shock and everything um, the same once we actually install the two-inch drop springs. Now, some aftermarket springs actually accommodate for this, so you might not need them if you're going with um, an aftermarket shock. When I actually do get around to replacing these shocks, I'm going to go with the Bilstein 4600s, not the 5100s and that's just because um once again it's not getting lifted it's not going to really be going off road i don't know who knows maybe eventually if i can uh find a place to go i might just uh, make a video go off road with it but it's really not um, an off-road oriented build so i'm going to stick with the 4600s the ride is going to be pretty much stock probably better though being they are bilsteins all right then the last thing we're going to be installing are these airlift adjustable basically springs pretty much these go inside of the spring just in the rear and what this is going to do is level the back out when i'm actually towing with it you can see this little uh picture here when the actual uh trailer with the car is on the back it kind of pulls the back end down and now that i'm putting the two inch drop springs in this thing is probably going to be sitting like this picture so putting these in here pretty much they just sit inside the spring and then once you actually have a load there's a little schrader valve that just connects both of these airbags the um just like a little uh, plastic hose so once you actually have the trailer on there you could just come in there with the Schrader valve and just a regular little 12 volt air compressor and fill those airbags up and they're going to be inside the springs here and they're basically going to lift the back end up so it's perfectly level when you're actually towing something now i could have waited on these if i wasn't uh, putting the springs in but like I said after I put these in I'm not gonna have that kind of rake with the back end sticking up So that kind of accommodates for that when you have a load in the back or when you're towing It doesn't sit on the bump stops because it kind of has that extra height in the back with these obviously that's gonna be gone So I'm gonna need these in there. The other option was uh, getting these kind of rubber like round bricks that kind of sit in the back here and They also go inside the spring. They maybe go up like halfway that way when you're driving down the road with no uh, trailer or no load in the back the suspension moves as normal it feels fine but once you actually have a trailer hooked to the back the whole thing kind of uh when the weight comes down it actually sits on that rubber bumper and cushions the ride and then also keeps it level i didn't go that route because i am going with the lowering springs and i didn't think they're going to fit in there and then once we're done with all of this i'm going to uh change the oil it has like 47 percent oil life left 
but um, this thing's probably going to be getting worked. Plus, it's getting warmer out now, and if I'm pulling the Camaro and it, I'm putting it to work, I want to have uh, some nice clean oil in there. Also, yeah, these shocks are really shot. Actually, I'm looking at them. It looks like, I don't know if you can see that, there's kind of like a wet stain where all the oil probably just leaked out. Actually, they feel kind of good. Yeah, they got some life left in them. All right, I'm guessing it goes like that. So there's a hole here, and then there's a hole all the way back here. So I'm guessing we're just gonna line it up there. The hardware it comes with, um, we're gonna just, it doesn't even look like it has a screw long enough. I guess it gets put one on each side. So put one, two, three, and then um, we're gonna reconnect the shock down here. It did come with six bolts, so. That's probably how it goes. I guess they did that so you don't crush the thing. And you tighten it. They don't give you any lock nuts though. I might have some red thread locker through my washer uh, can here. Hopefully I have some big lock washers. All right, so here's an old spring and a new spring side by side. You can see the new one obviously is gonna be shorter. So I'm gonna go look at the airlift kit now and see what needs to be done because we wanna get those airbags in here and then slip the whole thing in. But I think the, uh, the hose comes out of the top for the airbags. So I have to get all that hooked up. Airbags in here first, get the hoses hooked up and then we can slip these in. And um, we'll just find a place to put the Schrader valve. I'll open up the kit and I'll show you guys what I'm talking about. All right, so we're glassing the instructions real quick. Pretty much we're going to be just squishing these down. So taking this cap over here, just squishing these down real small. We're gonna squeeze them through the spring. And then uh, from there, we have to just modify, it looks like the top of this. They said this should be like an inch, this hole. And this is the top isolator that goes to uh, the top of the body like that. We're just gonna open that hole up somehow. I gotta see if I have a razor blade. And um, from there, we'll just connect the air hoses pop them in make sure nothing's rubbing and then I just have to run them they get teed together and then they go to like one uh, Schrader valve here and that's where you're actually going to uh, put the air in just like with a tire pump or whatever to raise and lower the thing also for the eye box um, installing these pretty straightforward you just got to put them so the eye box name is facing the right way so these are gonna go in like that also if anybody has uh, that auto air ride on their uh, Tahoe, Suburban, Yukon, whatever. This kit actually comes with these little adapters. I guess this is to uh, lengthen the uh, the air ride sensor in the back. So get picking up this set, you can use them um, if you're trying to eliminate your air ride system and you wouldn't have a light on the uh, front because that should uh, compensate for the sensor. The instructions are a little unclear with regards to how the line should be ran. Because if we look here, it tells us uh, for Suburban Tahoe, Yukon Trailblazer, Hummer Escalade, Bravada, Avalanche, you have to trim the top isolator, which is what we're going to be doing. But then it also, um, it just says to put the flattened air spring through the lowest opening with the stem at the bottom. So I'm wondering, it says through the lowest opening. So does that mean the stem at the bottom, is the stem gonna be like that? Or is it going through the top where the hose is gonna come through the isolator? So I gotta take a look at this. Because then when you come down here, it shows it at the top. 
but this says it's for like a Crown Vic. Oh, also Suburban Yukon Envoy. All right, so I guess um, I guess I'm putting it through the top then. All right, so install this. We're just going to take the top a uh, little plug off here. We want to squish this thing down. back on and that'll keep the air from coming back in. I'm just going to spray them down with soapy water and we got to remember these are going in with the name facing up so I'm going to install this so it's like that. Looks about right. So I took one more look at the instructions and it does show it. The spacer has to go on the end with the hose. You can see here, uh, the solar protector on the bottom, it's going through the airline. Solar protector on the top, it's also going through the airline. And they only come with two protectors from what I can see. So it's not like there's one for the top and the bottom. So I'm just gonna leave it running through the top. I kind of would have preferred having it through the bottom. That way I would have the protector down there. But if it's through the bottom, the hose is going to actually move with the suspension travel. Whereas if it's at the top, this bag should just stay up like this and the hose isn't going to move with the axle. All right, so the other side's all in. Now I'm working on the driver's side. I forgot that I had this, uh, this rubber on the bottom. The other side fell out, but I found it. So with this on here, um, it's thick enough. The, uh, the bottom of the airbag shouldn't rub, so it should be all right. So they're all hooked up. All I got to do now is put the shocks back in. But the way I ran this, I put the little Schrader valve. There was already a hole kind of inside of the uh, tow hitch here. So I just opened it up and I put the valve in there. And you can see it's kind of hidden away. So I can easily just reach down here and fill them up because I could just use the, uh, the 12 volt port right in the back of the uh, hatch area. But I just ran this hose down through the frame rail there had it come out and then I just kind of secured it up by the rear AC lines and that's actually where it tees off so the one hose there is coming from the driver side spring and then the hose going straight back is coming from the passenger side but I'm just gonna finish buttoning all this up get the sway bar in get the shocks in we'll get her on the ground and then uh, what do you say we just hook up the compressor and hopefully they work All right, so the back's down on the ground. Right now, I'm just going to get this oil changed. You can see we have quite a bit of a look under here. It looks like the seal for the front diff is leaking, which isn't too big of a deal. You just pop the drive shaft out. That could be changed. But as far as this oil goes, um, I'm not sure if it's the rear main or the oil pan gasket. It's all kind of just right in the back. I'm actually seeing it up towards the oil pan in addition to like over here, so it might just be the pan gasket. I think last time I changed the oil in here, I actually popped this off and looked in there and it looked dry. And also I do change the filter. I know last time I didn't record it, but I got a new uh, Mobile One extended performance. I pretty much always go with Mobile One because it's usually on sale for like a uh, one of the big bottles with the filter. And that's what I put in the Camaro. Extended performance was the deal this week, so Tahiti's getting some uh, extended performance this oil change. So springs are all in, airbags are in, and look at how perfect this came out. It's pretty much uh, perfectly level all the way across. And just driving it around briefly, I don't notice any difference in the ride. It feels exactly the same. 
Uh, the tires aren't bottoming out on anything. And um, overall, the look, just having the back drop down, it looks so much better. Um, just having it level all the way across, opposed to before where the ass was just kind of high in the air. And having those airbags in there, that's going to allow me to tow stuff without having to worry about the ass end sitting on the bump stops or um, anything rubbing. Because you got to remember now, we're dropping the rear end two inches. So any of that kind of resistance that the rear had, like when you have a uh, trailer up against it to drop down with the weight, you're pretty much going to be dropping that down two inches lower. So chances are the wheels are probably going to be rubbing and you're definitely gonna be like sitting on the bump stops. So if you're doing uh, two inch drop springs like I did and you plan on towing, I definitely recommend those airbags. Let's uh, go in here, fill them up and I'll show you how they work. Excuse the mess, but this is all uh, Camaro stuff I'm moving to the garage. But convenient enough, we have a little uh, 12 volt port there. I just have this little uh, air compressor here. And you can see Right there is my valve. And they recommend keeping at least like five PSI of air in these at all times. And you can actually air these up just to improve the ride if you want. So if you want to put some air in there, of course it's gonna slightly raise the rear, but I was driving around with about 10 PSI in them. Um, they just recommend keeping some air in them just so they don't like collapse and rub. They want to keep them like cradled and uh, stuff tight inside the spring. But you could totally just air them up and drive around and, uh, you know, just to improve the ride, it's not gonna hurt anything. But I got about 10 in here now. Let's uh, bring them up to, I'd say 40, and let's see if the back end raises up. All right, so I brought them up to 50. And now you can see the back end is sitting a little bit higher. I still wouldn't say as high as stock, but it's definitely more rake towards the back. So when you have the trailer hooked up there, you're just gonna come in here and fill this up and pretty much just fill it until it's level. Then we take a peek underneath. You can see uh, the airbag filled up inside the spring there. And then to remove the air, you just come in here and press the button. And uh, you can air them down like that. But overall, I'm really happy with these so far. I mean, next video, I think we're gonna actually go pick up a trailer and uh, kind of play around with it. I know a lot of you guys are telling me you want to see this thing tow something. So maybe we'll pick up a U-Haul, just drive around with it, put the Trans Am on it, test out the airbags. We'll see um, how it's going to sit before I air them up with the two inch drop springs. And uh, then we'll fill them up and see how much you can actually level it out. All right, so I got to drop back down. You can see we're back to being pretty much level there. One thing I do want to mention, these damn uh, turn signals, the ones I just put on here, we got a shitload of rain, and you can see this one has a little bit in there, but you come over to this side. And that looks like absolute shit. So I think what's happening, and I think somebody actually mentioned this in the comments, you can see the headlights are fine, but they're kind of covered under the hood. You come down here, you kind of have this opening in the grill. I think water's coming through here, and it's uh, dripping down the the bulb socket and coming in through the gasket because um, I still look on the other ones and the exact same thing happened and that's the only really thing that's exposed is this opening here water can easily get in there and it's probably working its way through the gasket around the bulb so I'm gonna pull these off and uh, dry them out as best as I can with like a, a heat gun or something and then I'm gonna probably put a little bit of silicone just around uh, the gaskets for the bulbs and we'll see if that helps I mean other than that uh, the headlights have been fine so I think that's um, where all the water is coming in through but regardless with the springs done I'm very happy with the way this came out it's very subtle um, it still pretty much looks stock almost I mean very average people on the street obviously aren't gonna notice but it's definitely a lot cleaner having the back uh, drop down. I'm glad I didn't lift the front up because as I mentioned, I'm trying to not go with like an off-road build with this So uh, lowering the back down and putting the air helper springs in there. Not only does it look nicer It's also uh, still gonna be practical when it comes to towing and as I mentioned earlier uh, Driving this thing. I don't feel any difference in the springs it feels absolutely fine The tires aren't even rubbing on anything even though I dropped it down So if you guys want to pick up these springs for your truck I'm going to uh, put a link down below along with the airlift spring specific uh, 
to the Tahoe Suburbans Yukons. But let me know what you guys think in regards to the uh, trailer idea. If you want to see me just pick up a trailer, play around with it, grab the Trans Am. Uh, we'll have some fun. I'd throw the Camaro on the back of it, but obviously that's still a part, so we can't really do that. But with that being said, I think that is going to do it for this video. Uh, be on the lookout because one of the upcoming... But with that being said, I think that's going to do it for this video. We will get around to the shocks eventually. I'm going to probably focus on just little detail kind of stuff. I don't want to do anything major because I'm still trying to get the Camaro back together. And then as I said, we will have Trans Am stuff coming. The brake video is going to be out next on that. I'm hoping to have it out. Um... If not by the end of this month, sometime at the beginning of next month. And once that's out, I'm pretty much going to be all caught up with the Trans Am stuff that I already have shot. And then we're going to actually uh, start getting into more stuff. And it's most likely going to be either the engine bay cleaning or the T-tops. We're probably going to jump right into the T-tops because once that's done, we can actually get around to cleaning the interior up. And I know a lot of you guys want to see that. But as always, guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. And if you did, please be sure to like, comment, share, subscribe. And I'll see you in a few days.